Hi everybody, this is Miss Peachy from your WCA biology class and um, here I am with my next video in this series going through Unit 3 Lesson 10, Cells and the Body Systems. So again, as I remind you on every recording, I do want you to make sure that you open up um, from our website a copy of our notes guide. So this is, a, this is what it would look like and that should be linked to um, on our website, pretty much right underneath the, the link for this video. Okay, so here we are looking at um, kind of more, I guess, broadly, what makes up organisms. Since we've been talking about cells and cell types and cell functions, now we're going to look a bit more about organisms in general. So um, looking at slide two of this lesson, it talks about the parts of a multicellular organism, it clarifies to you that a multicellular organism is an organism that's made up of more than one cell, which I feel like is kind of self-explanatory, but we do have single cell organisms as well. And that multicellular organisms have um, kind of different kind of areas of organization. And I actually want to bring over the, the note sheet that I brought because um, they don't have a picture like this, but it kind of goes like this. And I brought this picture in here. So when we look at the organizational kind of levels of a, of a multicellular organism. We have single cells and single cells make up tissues and tissues are groups of the same type of cell kind of within a body, whether that's a, a, um, an animal, a plant, a fungi, doesn't matter. They're groups of, of cells that all have the same type. And then those groups of cells can form organs and organs um, are different kinds of cells that are working kind of collaboratively to perform a function. So they're not all the same type of cell, but they are um, all kind of working together to perform a function and multiple organs make up organ systems and organ systems can, um, you know, kind of each organ within the organ system is kind of part of um, one player, I guess, within doing like a job for that body. And then those organ systems make up the organism. So listed here below then is a list of the different kinds of organ systems that are found in bodies. Circulatory system, digestive system, immune system, integumentary system, the lymphatic system, muscular system, nervous system, reproductive system, respiratory system, and skeletal system. And so this is going to um, be across the board from multiple organisms, from plants to fungi to animals, you know, that they all have similar types of systems as this, but not all organisms have all these systems. So there are levels of complexity within organisms as well. For example, in the animal kingdom, there are invertebrate animals that don't have all of these body systems. In fact, the simplest of all invertebrate um, animals, the sponge, has no body systems really, it has no true t uh, tissues that make up the sponge. So we have a bunch of different types of body systems. Um, in this lesson, they focus specifically a little bit on the circulatory system. Um, they also talk, or the respiratory system, excuse me, and they also talk a little bit about the digestive system. And then later on, I think in the lesson, they go and talk a bit more about the nervous system. So moving that on here. Um, cells with the same function connected together into structures are called tissues. A collection of tissues that all work together for a specific function is called an organ. When groups of organs, each with different functions but a similar collective purpose are connected, it is called an organ system. And so here it talks about respiratory system. Specifically it says not all ver invertebrate animals have true respiratory systems. Um, but then it goes into what's known as a model. And so we oftentimes use models in science because models help us to better understand and um, make observations and predictions about behaviors. So sometimes systems are very complex and it's helpful to have a model to be able to make predictions about complex systems. And in biology, we do this. We have here a model of the circulatory system. We have a model of the digestive system. Um, in other areas of science, this is done as well, like weather models, computer models will make predictions about what the weather is going to be like from a very complex system of the atmosphere, which, as you all probably know, isn't necessarily 
super accurate all the time because it is very complex. So it's difficult to make predictions from complex systems. Um, so it's going on to ask you guys to make your own model of the respiratory system using these supplies here. And so what you would need to have is a small soda bottle or a water bottle, some some straws, some flexible straws, a hammer, Phillips head screwdriver or a large nail, scissors or precision knife, a few little balloons and something to seal the holes, um, gum, hot wax, glue, and then some tape as well. And it goes into the directions of this as well here. Um, oops. On the next page, where is that? On slide five, there's actually a video here that you can watch that will kind of go through with you how to make that model. And you can um, watch them make the model and make your observations from that as well. So if you don't have those supplies and you can't make the model at home, you can just actually watch this video and watch them make the model for you. All right, so um, pretty much that is it. If you move forward on this as well, they're going to have a little bit more information here about the nervous system. So there'll be a little video on the structure of the nervous system as well. And then there'll be some questions for you to answer on the nervous system. So that's in kind of a nutshell what's going on with this lesson. Pretty straightforward. Um, so that's it for me, guys. We'll see you in the next one.